Um, all right, so without further ado, I'm gonna introduce the three and then they're each going to give a quick description of themselves, just a general information. We'll start off with that. So we have Madison Meehan from Stone Point. We have Jenna Steichen from Summit Partners and we have Megan Loist from Lair Hippo. So I'm just gonna start off at the top with Madison. If you wanna introduce yourself in terms of the year that you graduated from Boston College, what's your major, or if you had a minor as well, uh, what you were involved with at BC, and how you got into PE. Maybe it was a typical track, maybe it wasn't, but um, give us a little bit insight to that. So we'll start off with you, Madison. Sure. Um, so my name is Maddie. I graduated from BC in 2016, um, and I played soccer at BC. That's where I spent most of my time. Um, I majored in economics, and then as I started to consider different career options, I started taking more finance classes in CSOM. So I took some of the basic accounting and other finance classes. Um, and during my junior year, I started exploring different options and going to some of the on-campus events. And I ultimately decided that I'd like to try out investment banking just because I thought it was a really great learning experience and would give me a good glimpse into the finance world. So I ended up interning in the financial institutions group at UBS, um, which basically focuses on companies such as asset managers, insurance companies, banks, um, specialty finance, a wide variety of things. I, I interned there my junior summer and returned the following year where I spent three years as an analyst. And then I ultimately transitioned and moved to Stone Point um, in about two years ago now mm -hmm. to move to private equity. And the main reason I did so is at an investment bank, which I'm sure you'll hear similar themes from others. You spend a lot of time advising clients, um, both on the sell side and the buy side. So a lot of corporations who are considered strategic buyers and private equity firms who are considered financial buyers often hire an investment bank to help them do their work. So to help them decide whether they want to buy or sell an investment. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to move to the buy side, which is private equity and venture capital, um, just to get a more in-depth experience um, and understanding of businesses. So what we really do is we are investors and we buy private companies. So um, very simplistically, we raise money from LPs, which is called limited partners. Um, so they give us their cash. We take that cash and we buy private companies. And then within five to seven years, we sell those companies, hopefully for double what we bought them. And then we return that capital back to our LPs. So we've made a return for them. So rather than them investing in the public market, they give it privately to Stone Point um, in the hopes that we generate a good return for them. So it's been a great experience. I'm happy to go in more detail, but I'll let the others give some background. Thank you so much. Would you prefer to be called Madison or Maddie? Either works. I usually go by Maddie. Sure, great. You are extremely busy. If you were on the D1 women's soccer team, and you, I can't even imagine how, yeah, that would have been very crazy summer and very early fall for you because you would have been in, in season too as well. Okay. Yep. Wow. That was a busy fall. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> can't even imagine. So thank you so much, Madison. That was a great explanation of everything. And thank you for defining terms too as well. Uh, Jenna, you are up. So Jenna again is with Summit Partners. Great. So a little bit about yourself, Jenna. Yes, yeah, so I do not have as much experience to speak to uh, as Maddie and Megan do, but I am a senior at BC right now and I interned at Summit last summer and then will be joining the team full time in Boston uh, after graduation. So super excited for that. I'm currently studying information systems and then minoring in Jewish studies. Uh, spent last semester in Israel or last spring in Israel uh, yeah. for a little bit before <laughs> coming home early and uh, got into that there. Uh, but at BC, my primary involvement has really been with the Shea Center. I became one of the co-chairs a uh, second semester of my sophomore year and have really enjoyed being involved in the Entrepreneurship Center, also very involved with the Women Innovators Network. And the reason I decided to go into growth equity was mostly just because I loved talking to entrepreneurs and 
I felt like there was so much energy there and I wanted to be a part of the conversation and hear what they were building. And the idea of being at a firm where we get to partner with those entrepreneurs and help them accomplish whatever their goal is and realize their vision was super exciting to me. And so after sophomore year, I did the True Ventures Tech Fellowship, which would highly recommend for anyone uh, did it in San Francisco and kind of got a taste for venture capital. And that was early stage venture capital. So a lot of the companies that they are investing in are pre-revenue. So they're usually just an idea and you're really investing in the founder. Partners were growth equity. And so we sit between private equity, which is a bit later stage, and then early stage venture capital. And we are investing in companies that are growing really quickly. They usually already are generating quite a bit of revenue and are hopefully profitable uh, to show that they're pretty capitally efficient as well. So that's a little bit about my background and happy to answer any questions. Sure. Did you do two ventures then after your sophomore year? So it would have been in person 2019? Yes. Yeah. We got wow. to be in person for that, which was fantastic and really enjoyed getting to see the West Coast a little bit before staying out here on the East Coast now. Yeah. And the timing worked out really well. So this past summer, were you, was it like a two week internship with Summit or was it entirely remote for 10 weeks? I think it ended up being like an 11 week internship or oh it was a pretty long internship yeah. yeah so they ended up keeping the entire one but i was at home in the basement at my parents home um on zoom all day so it was a different experience than i had anticipated but still ended up being really rewarding and i learned a ton awesome yeah great cool um and last but not least megan with lair hippo give us a little bit about yourself yeah. Uh, hey guys. So, so great to meet all you. Um, this is like my favorite thing in the world. I'm a recent grad myself. I graduated in 2019 uh, from BC uh, and at BC I studied finance and information systems. I came in undecided. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do, just an inkling that I wanted to do business. Um, on campus, uh, I think like I, I really attribute my journey into venture capital and VC to my very early days at VC. Like my favorite class freshman year was computers and management. I had Professor Gallagher and had just like the best time. And today's actually a really interesting day for the BC startup ecosystem. Like I remember in my computers and management class, uh, you know, Professor Gallagher brought in Nick Rellis, who was the founder of Drizzly, which just got acquired for $1.1 billion, which is huge huge win for the BC startup ecosystem. So like that was one of the first, like one of my first examples of like seeing, like understanding what tech investing even looks like or, or tech companies in general. So did computers and management. I went on Tech Trek West um, my sophomore year um, where basically for, for all of those who are in Tech Trek, um, you're basically doing my job like full time. You, you go, you prep for these meetings, you meet with, you know, founders and, and sort of executives to learn about their company. Um, and so that was like really, I think, my first primer on the world of, of investing. Um, so I'm very grateful to BC for providing that sort of background for me. Um, and then on campus, I was very involved with Smart Women Securities. I was the co-president my senior year. Um, and also the Finance Academy, I was the co-president my senior year. So I was very, uh, I've always been a very big proponent of uh, career, career uh, things on campus. Um, I did a bunch of internships before I graduated too. So I, I was, I'm a big believer of sort of experiential learning. And um, I think the earlier you start thinking about internships and doing them, the, the clearer picture you have of sort of what you'll, you know, finding your best fit when you graduate. So like I did the Girls Who Invest program my freshman year. Um, I interned at, um, and, and through that I was at a hedge fund um, my freshman summer. Um, sophomore year, I did wealth management at JP Morgan, which I learned very quickly was not the best fit. I was like, I want to be doing company analysis versus working with individuals. Um, I did a growth equity internship during the school year at BC for 10 to 15 hours a week um, at Bay Boston, which is focused on financial services investing. And then my junior summer, which was sort of, you know, everyone thinks about junior year, like you're hopefully you're going to be working somewhere, you'll work full time. Uh, I was at General Atlantic. Um, which is a growth equity firm, actually very similar to Summit Partners, um, except GA um, investing is, is typically a little bit more later stage. So think $100 million checks uh, versus sort of, you know, uh, smaller checks. Uh, and so I interned at GA um, in New York my junior summer. Um, I actually took off fall of senior year 
um, to work at GA in Palo Alto to do sort of the West Coast experience. Uh, fun fact, I've never tailgated in the mods and that is like the saddest thing in the world because uh, I wasn't on campus in the fall. Um, and yeah, so I worked at GA for a year post-grad on their tech investing team um, and joined Lear Hippo in September. So that's kind of like a long journey. Uh, and at Lear Hippo, we are seed stage investors. That's like the early, like pretty much the earliest you can kind of go in the investing world. Founders can come with sort of an idea, a plan. Oftentimes they'll have traction and we're writing like $2 million checks at the most. Uh, but for the most part, it's like $1 million checks um, uh, into just very, very early stage companies when there's oftentimes maybe, you know, two to four people max at the company and you're making a big bet on the founder. Um, and the market itself. Um, and then uh, for fun, uh, uh, I, I actually started this uh, organization called Gen Z VCs in November uh, out of a personal need. I didn't know anyone when I started in VC. And so um, fast forward two months later, I'm now managing a community of 4,000 young investors, students, aspiring VCs, um, and Gen Z founders. So if any of you guys are interested in VC, uh um i uh definitely join my slack group uh, i'd love to have you and um i actually am running a, a club a beta club too to help connect sort of gen z students with startups that are um you know looking to connect with gen z beta users so sorry that was a very long answer no no uh, yeah absolutely and please feel free to megan to put the um link for that in the chat well definitely um Girls Who Code, which campus, uh, the, going back in time, <laughs> Girls Who Code, which campus did you do? Yeah, so it was Girls Who Invest. Uh, there's yeah, a lot of girls, girls I knew that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Um, Wrong I, Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 for sure. There, there's a lot of girls, there's like Girls Who Consult now too. Uh, so there's, there's lots, lots of them. Uh, I, so I was actually in the first cohort of scholars back then. It was just a small group of 30, 30 women. Okay. Um, I was on the UPenn campus. Okay. Um, fast forward five years. I think there are 150 scholars taken in the program. We have, uh, I think over 500 alumni, um, and I'm actually on the advisory board. So, um, I get to work with, um, you know, thinking about sort of strategy of the organization now, which is super fun. And I started our alumni council for, um, and I, I work with a lot of young women interested in investing. So that's, that's really fun. Awesome. Great. I have some names to send your way. People who are doing it this summer. So cool. Right. Yay. Um, networking happens at every moment, right? So let's talk about your jobs from 30,000 feet. And Jenna, feel free to talk about the internship and all of that and, and kind of knowing um, how different scenarios for all three of you play out in terms of what did you know, what did life look like for your role at 30,000 feet pre-COVID, you know? Um, and what do you anticipate it's gonna look like as we get back to whatever the, the new normal is going to be? And what do you see are some of the rewards and some of the challenges in working in PE or VC? So we'll start back up at the top. So Madison, if I can call on you, thank you. Sure. Um, so as I mentioned before, we have the $8 billion fund um, that we are investing in middle market companies. Mm -hmm. So we typically acquire a majority stake in companies so that management keeps about 30% that they're incentivized to perform well over time. Um, so the basis of our job is to determine the valuation of these companies. So we participate in banker-led processes or work directly with management team to try to complete a transaction. So we want to make sure our bid is the most competitive, but we want to make sure that it's a, we believe in the story and that the company will grow at a quick enough pace to enable us to generate a return and return capital to our investors. So on a daily basis, that is what we are focused on. So for any particular live transaction um, we do quite a bit of due diligence and due diligence is focused on the business um, its financials the industry growth prospects competitors its clients um, pretty much anything you can think of so we work directly with the management team and sometimes there's an investment bank in between who facilitates the process 
Um, and we send request lists, questions, organize long calls, um, and essentially get to know everything about the business and the industry overall. Um, then using a couple of different methodologies, we'll come up with our ultimate recommendation, um, which we'll communicate to the manager, to the company, um, and ultimately, hopefully, consummate the transaction. Um, once we buy a company, it becomes one of our portfolio companies. So we currently have over 50 portfolio companies at our firm. And so on an ongoing basis, each associate has three to five companies that they consistently cover over time. And depending on the company, we are either very involved or a little less so. So some we only have um, one call once a month to review monthly financials. That's for some of our larger, more established companies that are pretty self-sufficient and need a little bit less guidance. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, we'll talk to them almost every day. We'll work directly with the CFO on financial analyses. We often make strategic introductions to clients. We'll help them with product build out. One thing that Stone Point focuses on quite a bit is tuck-in acquisitions, so helping our portfolio companies acquire smaller portfolios and tuck them under. And so we'll help out with that MA function. So that's the second part. So one is live transactions. Secondly, is portfolio companies. And then thirdly, we, sorry, um, focus on industry work, which we call elephants. And so our idea is Stone Point is also a financial services focused firm. Um, and so there are 12 elephants, but over 50 subsectors that we focus on. And so we, we try to get to know the management teams and all the companies within those sectors um, better than anyone else so that we have a competitive edge when we work in processes. So we'll spend time going to conferences, talking to bankers, management teams, I would say that generally speaking is a smaller percentage of our time just because it happens naturally and given that we spend so much time in each of these areas already we're pretty plugged in um, but that gives a general overview of some of the things we do on a daily basis so it's one other point to touch on it's very team oriented so each portfolio company or each transaction will typically have five four or five people working on it one is an associate, I'm currently an associate, vice president, principal, and maybe a second principal. We just launched our analyst program, so we now are offering um, students to come directly from undergrad to join our firm. That started in September and is going well so far, so now teams are a little bit larger. Um, but yeah, so whenever you're working on these projects it's always very um collaborative and you're working with these people all day long constantly on the phone emailing so no day is the same which i'm sure a lot of people will tell you but it keeps it interesting and it's always busy thank you that was an excellent explanation of how the whole process works and portfolio companies and what the structure is like internally for you and who's working on um what with the uh, acquired companies. So that was a great explanation. Thank you, Maddie. So Jenna, we're gonna move over to you. 30,000 feet at Summit, having been an intern. And feel free to kind of throw in um, True Ventures too, because that would have been a VC experience. Yeah, so for quickly to start with True Ventures, I guess, for their fellowship, the way that they do it is that they have you work at one of their portfolio companies. So I was primarily working at an early stage startup and then once a week we would go in to the True Ventures company and they would have um, their partners talk to us or our founders come in and got to learn a lot about the firm that way. And so if you are interested, highly, highly recommend. The team there is incredible. And then for Summit, that was much more on the investment side. And as I mentioned before, their growth equity and a lot of the companies that we're looking to invest in are generally not looking to raise money. And so a big portion of the job is sourcing, which means I'm cold emailing and cold calling CEOs to try and get them on the phone with me so I can learn about their company and see if it might be a good fit uh, for us to invest in and partner with. And so over the summer, um, it was a lot of training <laughs> to try and get up to speed on how to run those calls. And then uh, actually I was given the opportunity to just reach out on my own and 
it was kind of crazy because I'm, I was 21 at the time and they just gave me full reign to start reaching out. And you have this brand name behind you, which gives you the ability to actually get on the phone with these CEOs. And I think that's something that kind of differentiates going into a position like growth equity from going into investment banking or consulting where you don't get to have those interactions with your client quite as early, or at least you're not leading them. Whereas for what I'm doing, it's you're reaching out to the CEO and you're jumping on the call and you're leading it and it's one-on-one. So it's a really steep learning curve, but I really enjoyed it. And then the other main part of the job was portfolio company support work. And so I looked into an expansion opportunity for one of our portfolio companies and was able to pass on all that research to the company at the end of the summer and felt super supported by the team. Um, And then we also had a project where we just got to work with the other interns and try and come up with a community impact idea that Summit actually ended up putting money to, putting money into at the end of the summer. So it was cool to see that idea kind of come to fruition. Um, So that was the majority of my summer, a lot of Zoom calls and begging CEOs to talk with me so I could learn about their business. Quite impressive. When you get that CEO on the phone, what's the first thing out of your mouth? Uh, Usually I try to have stocked their LinkedIn, everything online enough before to have something in common where I can either ask them about where they are and make a connection that way. Or if I saw that we knew a mutual person, I'll bring that up uh, just to try and make it more personal and hopefully have it be more of a conversation. That takes courage (laughs) and research like you were doing to know what to say. Yeah. Awesome. We need to have you do a networking 101. (laughs) Um, And last but not least, Megan. Yeah. So uh, I'm with Jenna on the sourcing train. I think in growth equity, VC, most, most jobs, if you're coming straight out of college into an investing role, it's going to be heavy on the sourcing side. And what that means is you are basically top of funnel for any and all opportunities for the firm. Uh, Because if you think about it, you know, there's going to be senior partners. They all have like really great networks. People are sending them deals and companies. Uh, You as a college student probably don't have a super expansive network. So your job is like cold, especially in growth equity, like cold emailing founders, getting them on the phone. uh, And and that's going to be a majority of your day. And also I think too, thematic research is really important. Like when you are thinking about what are the emerging spaces that, you know, your firm should be looking into. And oftentimes you bring a differentiated perspective, uh, which, it, which is, which is helpful. So at GA, that was my, that was a, a large portion of my day. Like I was sending tons of cold emails. Um, I was doing sourcing trips, which was really fun. Like, I remember like, it's like, like Jenna kind of said, it's like, I remember as, you know, I was a, a junior in college. Um, they flew me to Los Angeles with another intern and like two analysts and we were just meeting with tons of CEOs and that's like crazy to think about. Um, and you, you do a lot of, you know, training and prep and um, cause at the end of the day, you're a representative of, of the firm and you have to do a really good job. And so being super prepared coming into those calls is incredibly important where the thematic research sort of comes into play. Um, and so uh, on the Lear Hippo side, which is what I do now, it's very similar. Um, uh, I am, uh, I think, 10 years-ish younger than everyone on my team. So I am a true <laughs> true baby VC uh, learning the ropes, uh, which is a good thing though, because um, again, I, like I spend most of my time talking to founders. Like when I looked, I just looked at my calendar to see like, what did my, what did my week look like this week? I did 10 new calls with companies over the past two days, two with you know more senior folks on the team that we had already spent time with. Um, and then just like team meetings. Um, but for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm meeting new founders. I'm trying to figure out who's starting companies because it, it's different at seed where I'm investing than where Jenna is, because you can't sort of track companies based on how much money they've raised. Like when I was in growth equity, I'd be like, okay, we're investing at the series C stage. What companies have raised series A money, series B money, uh, that look cool that I could be reaching out to at seed. It's like, there's nothing to go off of. It's just like this person might be starting a company soon. So you have to build those relationships over time. Um, And then I help with diligence as well. Um, So like I'm writing an investment memo tonight for a new company that we're looking into. Um, And uh, you know, the portfolio work, it it kind of, I think every, every investing role is going to be a combination of sourcing diligence and portfolio. 
Um, I think the more junior you are, the more, uh, the more it will gear towards sourcing. Um, and then as you move up through your career, it kind of like the, the other parts sort of even out over time. Uh, and so like, like Friday, I'm doing some portfolio work with Buzzer through our beta club. Um, um, it's so, but yeah, it's my, my job is mostly spent, um, you know, talking to people on the phone, getting to know other investors that are in similar spaces. Um, and I think when you think about your career and it's important to ask these questions up front because, um, and, and know what type of skill set you want to build. Like I know for myself, I, I'm a people person. I love talking to people. I love thinking about the world and spaces. Um, I do not love spending all day in Excel. So I would hate being in private equity. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Uh, and so I knew that at GA because I saw like sort of the trajectory moving forward and what my path would have looked like in the associates. And I was like, well, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, so I decided to move towards early stage VC where I knew more, more of my job and more of my day would be the, the fun stuff that I enjoy, which is just, you know, talking to people and, and uh, learning about their businesses. And a question I wanted to ask you too, Megan, kind of going mm -hmm. off some of the earlier stuff that you were talking about. Um, what do you read on a daily basis? What do you read to actually find, find out about seed companies? What sources are you? It sounds like you talk to a lot of people too to get, you know, track people. But what do you read? Publications um, that, the, that sophomores could kind of get their hands on. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if, so a big, a big trend right now in the tech world is everyone's starting their own newsletter. Uh, and oftentimes the platform is Substack. So what I read, I literally read my friends' newsletters that are writing interesting things. Um, uh, I can drop some of the links here in the chat, but the, in my opinion, if you're, if you're looking to learn more about VC, engage with founders, engage with VCs, the best place to learn is on Twitter. Spend like, and like you probably won't be hearing this from from a lot of people being like, spend your time on social media. You'll learn a lot. But truly, like I learn more on Twitter than I do like anywhere else. I'm seeing news. Uh, people post interesting threads. Um, like founders post threads. VCs post threads about what they're interested in. Um, like I did one on EdTech right when I joined Lear Hippo, which kind of blew up. And then I got like a bunch of inbound from founders that were like, I'm building an EdTech. I want to talk to you. Um, Twitter is a fantastic place to learn. And I think uh, I wish I got on Twitter earlier. Uh, and uh, it's funny, actually, Professor Gallagher, again, he, he knows best. He like had us all get on Twitter like freshman year and for Tech Trek. Um, and I never, after that class, I never used it until I joined Lear Hippo. And that was like one of the first things they taught me. Um, before I even joined, they're like, well, let's get your Twitter up and running. So when you start, you can sort of hit the ground running. So um, long-winded way of saying Twitter is great and you'll learn about like newsletters and stuff there. Um, and there's, there's, you know, every flavor under the sun um, for like what you are looking for. I think Accelerated is a fantastic one, which is by two twin investors at CRV, um, Justine and Olivia Moore. I love their newsletter. Um, I also love High Tea, which is actually a Gen Z specific newsletter on internet culture. Um, and uh, as the only Gen Z member of my team, I oftentimes will have that sort of Gen Z hat of, of companies that we're looking at. Um, and as a student, that's like a really good um, differentiator for you too when you're doing recruiting. It's like, I understand Gen Z because I'm a Gen Z consumer, because I'm a Gen Z knowledge worker, and that's like an asset you bring to the table. So I think, um, you know, being up in, being sort of in tune with, with Gen Z trends and, and sort of what's going on uh, will oftentimes help inform the work that you're doing um, in meeting companies and tracking companies um, and in evaluating companies. So uh, long-winded way answer of, of saying you should be on Twitter. You know, that was very, very good. Um, and all these links and all this information that you're sharing, that's great insider knowledge and great, you know, tips for us to um, hear for sure. So I'm going to throw a question out to the group. And um, this is kind of like skills based stuff. Um, just chime in, you know, as you think of important things to share. What are um, Personality traits, word or skills are important for PE and the VC world. I mean, certainly students are probably already thinking like, oh, I'm going to do my two years in IB and then, you know, go when, into one of these areas. So what do you think are the important personality traits, important skills, and kind of like the reverse of that would also be like, okay, if you're more of a person who is XYZ, this is not the field for you. I think for, for VC, 
uh, if you want to be doing like venture capital or growth equity out of college, you have to knock down doors. Like at the end of the day, you have to like just hustle. Cause oftentimes there's, there's just not a lot of positions in, in VC right out of college. Not a lot of analyst jobs, not a lot of associate jobs. You're going to be going up against like really talented people from, from all over, all over the country. And thinking of ways to sort of differentiate yourself is, is super key. And you just have to like, you just have to like really hustle and, and, and know your stuff. Like when you're have that first interview, be insanely overprepared, give them no reason to not want to sort of continue talking to you. And I think that comes oftentimes in the form of like doing the job before you start. Um, like I remember for my job with my, my first interview with GA, I like knew I wanted to work at GA. I did, I did all the research. I was like, what are the firms that hire out of college for growth equity VC? Like who has a formal programs and how can I get in there? Um, and I like my first, my first call with them, I had like a four page prep document that I put together of like any and every question I thought they could ask me. And then when I went into their office, I had like a pitch deck of um, like a company that I was really interested in and like market research that I would like literally showed them. I was like, I love retail tech. Like here's what I've done in this space. And they're like, we're looking at a deal right now. Uh, do you mind if we keep this? This is actually really helpful. So like, being able to sort of add value before you do the job and before they hire you and show that in an interview is super important and I can't stress it enough and building relationships too. Um, I think like I was, I was the first person GA hired out of school, um, like in their analyst program that was not from basically an Ivy League school or, St or Stanford. Uh, and it's because I was like literally knocking down doors just to get them to talk to me at the first, at uh, sort of at first glance. Um, and again, I think it's just like, you need to be able to show that you can do the job and show that you like, you are exceptional. Um, so that's like my, my, definitely my biggest tip um, to everyone. Did you know that they were working on a deal for retail tech or coincidentally? <laughs> oh. Coincidentally, they were, um, I, I got lucky in that regard, but no matter what, I mean, like every, every firm, every, every investment firm is going to be doing market research. So like, if you're interested in consumer wearables technology, if you're interested in prop tech, like if you love retail technology, if you're like, or you love consumer, like you, I, I, I did like a whole project, my internship on literally tacos, uh, like taco market maps of like every taco chain in the country. Uh, you could, you could come in being like, I, I love retail. I love consumer and I love tacos and put together like a whole deck on like the taco landscape of the U S I'm not saying I would recommend that. I would, I would stick with tech if you can. Uh, but, um, comes to say like, you never really know what they're looking into and, um, whatever you bring to the table will, will surely be, you know, valuable and appreciated. Mm -hmm. Kind of knowing certain things that are doing well in the pandemic doesn't help. It helps too. And tacos are always great. Tacos are always great. Maddie and Jenna thoughts on the topic. Tacos or not, you know. <laughs> um, I think it, as it relates to skill set, I think just being well-rounded and pretty analytical um, is important for both investment banking and private equity. I think in both of those, you spend a little less time sourcing, but you do still get a lot of time with management teams, internal teams. So it's important that you can communicate well, both verbally and over email. Um, and important that you're just a quick learner and a critical thinker because people want to know that you can always think one step ahead, be proactive, and really take on a lot of responsibility quickly. Um, within both the investment banking and private equity world, there's always quite a bit to be done, um, usually a pretty quick timeline. So really looking for driven people who have a genuine interest in learning and developing and just in investing in general. And I imagine having been a student athlete, you are extremely goal driven and um, work very well under pressure on a team. <laughs> um, so yeah, you definitely have to be up for the challenge and willing to work hard to your point. Definitely. Yeah, thank you, Jenna. Uh, quickly, just to build off of that, I would say while you're at BC, seek out as many opportunities as you can to show that you can do those skills. Uh, communication is so important. My sophomore year, I was the one who coordinated the entire startup fair. And so I was emailing all these different startups in the Boston area and trying to get them to come to BC. And I was able to talk about that in my interview. I'd also started a podcast where I'd reached out to all these BC alumni that had founded their own companies and interviewed them. So I showed that I really liked having those conversations and would be comfortable getting on the phone with CEOs to do the sourcing part of the job. And then there's also ways to start getting into VC a little bit while you're still a student. 
I'm on the dorm room fund team for Boston, and that's allowed me to get to know a bunch of students in the Boston area, both in undergrad and grad. And also I'm just meeting with student founders all the time and having all those conversations. So highly, highly recommend that. There's also Contrary Capital, which is another student run fund. So if you can get involved in something like that, definitely recommend it. And if you have the chance to take initiative and to start something new uh, at BC or outside, definitely recommend that as well. Absolutely. And Start at Shea has a great newsletter, which is so easy to get on. Yes, yeah. please get on the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say is the startup fair now like a week this year in March. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. So it's all going to be virtual and a ton of really cool companies. So if you're looking for an internship, definitely recommend going. Um, I'm super excited for it. Yay. And Maddie just put into the chat for us too, as well as Start at Shea newsletter. Great. Yep. And definitely look for that week long event, the Career Center and the Shea Center partnering for that. So good stuff. Well, it is 20 of, so that gives us about 10 minutes for Q&A. So I, thank you so much for our panelists, you know, answering my questions one right after the other. Greatly appreciated. So Maddie's going to help me out with the chat. Uh, so students, because we do have, you know, almost 100 students on the call here, throw that right into the chat. Any questions that you might have for our panelists? And we'll be happy to help moderate those. And you can even just put it in the chat to everyone is fine. Should I start some music? <laughs> no questions. Yeah, we've got one question. Um, someone asked, what's the traditional route to PE or venture capital? To give a little bit of background on that, I think historically it has been to go to investment banking. The investment banking program is a two to three year analyst program and at which point you're promoted to associate and in the majority of analysts leave by that time and typical exit opportunities are to go to a private equity firm. So it's pretty common for that to happen. But now the recruiting timeline has significantly accelerated. So people are being recruited one to two years ahead of time. And so now they're being recruited directly out of college just as they're starting their investment banking job. And as a result of that, um, a lot of the private equity firms are saying, well, we're just gonna recruit directly out of undergrad um, because we'll just choose from a bigger pool of people and it'll allow us to train them ourselves. Um, and there's just a better tra career trajectory. So, Stone Point is one of those firms. We just started the program uh, in September, as I mentioned. So I think short answer is it used to be investment banking into private equity. They can speak to venture capital and it's now shifting directly to undergrads. So there are more opportunities to go directly into CE. And you had you had done UBS, Maddie, right before? Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So I spent almost three years at investment banking, which was a little bit longer than some of my peers, but I thought it was a really good learning experience and I finally felt like I was working like taking on more responsibility and so I was continuing to learn and develop. Um, but I felt like at that point becoming an associate wouldn't offer much growth personally. So I thought it was a good time to switch to private equity. And like I mentioned before, I thought being on the investment side was more interesting. Mm -hmm. And you had said Stone Point was also starting an analyst program, like an entry level. Had you mentioned that? Okay. Yeah. So we had our first class of four analysts start in September. Um, we've hired four for next fall. And now we're going to start doing, um, similar to the investment bank, a junior year program where we can offer full-time offers coming out of that. Excellent. That's some good. And just to, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Quickly answer Brian's question. Um, they do not require associates to get an MBA. Something unique about some point, a lot of private equity firms have two year associate programs and then kids leave to go get their MBA and often come back. Stone point is um, career trajectory. So no one leaves to get their MBA and it's like an evergreen contract. People are continuing to be promoted. Um, so stone point really only hires at the analyst and associate level and everyone progresses to become the principal. So everyone's been together for a really long time, which is a nice, 
Definitely. And how about work-life balance? Um, Maddie and Megan, what do you think about that? Work-life balance in VC and PE? Jenna, team EA, right? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the firm. Um, okay. I mean, we, we do work a lot. Like we work pretty late at night. Oftentimes there is work that you need to do on the weekend and it, it, it is more predictable in private equity than it is in investment banking. So that's nice, but people do work long hours and you'll find some people above you like to work early morning or late night. And so you can pretty much get any not any time of the day. Mm -hmm. And has that gotten worse with COVID and all of that? Sort of like the, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All the days blend together and it's a little bit less of a weekend. But. Sure, sure. How about VC, Megan? It's generally better work-life balance. Um, I think because, like, especially when you're in a sourcing role, you have more control over your hours than when you're taking meetings. But of course, things like, like, I have a memo to write tonight after, after this. So, like, I'm going to be in a bunch of emails to send. So, it really depends on the, on the day. But, like, some people, like, people just orient their, their days differently. Like some people are just like, I'm going to do all my meetings in the morning and then just like crank in the afternoon. So I'm done by the evening. So I'm space out their days. Like it's, it's much more when you're in a sourcing role, you basically set your own hours, um, which is nice. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, how about also having been an info system? Someone else had put in the yeah. chat. Um, and Jenna, are you info systems too as well? How has that been helpful for both of you? I think it's so super helpful. I mean, like I don't do a ton of coding, uh, nor was I amazing at that at BC. <laughs> I did, I did, I studied info systems because Professor Gall was like, Gallier was like, you did half the classes. Why don't you just finish it out? And I was like, all right, cool, I'll do that. Um, so coding was never like my specialty, but I think it gives you a really good background on just like technology generally. And when you're talking to really technical founders, if you can say like, like like talk about like just like the development process and like what goes into it like really have that product mindset about like well how did you think about this like when you were developing it or like the product like the the ui the like all that kind of stuff like i i constantly use that sort of mental mapping um from my info, info systems background especially with more technical companies um so i do think it's very helpful great jenna did you want to add anything as a current student I definitely agree with that. It was actually Professor Gallagher's class that also made me want to become an info systems concentrator. I was going to do finance originally, which probably would have been helpful with the financial modeling piece of the job, <laughs> but ended up going into info systems and definitely not great at coding, but I, my focus is the technology sector. And so having a better understanding of some of those companies uh, based on the concentration has been pretty helpful. Good. And actually stay unmuted because <laughs> there, there's two more questions in the chat. One is specifically directed for you, Jenna. Um, you might even see it. It just says about growth equity. So question for Jenna about growth equity as a whole. Where does growth equity typically take you or where do you hope to end up within the company? Different positions, unique work that's true to that uh, type of company. Yeah, I think Megan could also talk to this but there's a lot of different paths. There's not just one. And from what I've seen of other employees that I've talked with at Summit, a lot of them will either go and get their MBA. And then after your MBA, that kind of gives you the opportunity to pivot or go wherever you want. A lot of them will also go to other investment firms, typically earlier stage, um, or they'll jump onto our portfolio companies and they'll take on an operating role there. So I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet. There's also a lot that stay within Summit and end up moving up. So trying to figure it out. Gonna, gonna start and then see how it goes and figure it out. Sounds good. Megan, anything to add on that? Yeah, it's this, like when I look at my analyst class, um, three of us went on to early stage VC firms. Like I'm at Lear Hippo, my friend Dan is at GGV Capital and Enterprise, my friend Paul is in Consumer. Uh, and then the other two in my class actually went to GA's international offices to keep working for GA. So like very varied. And then when I look at the associates, many, many go off to do business school and then transition back into um, investing roles in different firms or even come back to GA. Um, I would say the most common path is like associate MBA and then figure it out from there. Um, but oftentimes people will transition to earlier stage investing um, more often than not. Good, cool, thank you. 
So last question actually goes back to Maddie. It's the last one up in the chat. Uh, so for Madison, do you have any specific groups such as, you know, FIG, FIG, or sponsors in IB prepare you better for the PE by sidetrack? This will be our last question. Um, Thanks, Maddie. Yeah, of course. So FIG can definitely be a little bit more technical than some sectors just because some of the companies are more balance sheet oriented. Um, so it's a little more technical and might be a bit of more challenge, which is always good. Um, but I would really say you should choose the industry based on what you're most interested in. And I think you'll find, you'll learn very similar things across industries and they'll all prepare you very well for the buy side. So it's always good just to really be interested in the companies that you're looking at and to get along with the people. Cause I think that's ultimately most important. And I find at Stone Point working across all the different sectors, it's really, who I like working with and what I'm most interested in, um, where I'm happiest. So you'll learn the same skills no matter what you're working on. Great, thank you so much. So that's all our questions for tonight. Um, there is excellent, excellent stuff in the chat. So make sure before you depart that you grab some of the great stuff that the panelists had put up in there. Um, good, good stuff between things that Megan has added in uh, in terms of like uh, some of the things that she's starting on her own uh, to Maddie put up the start at Shea that's in there too as well, those newsletters. So great, great stuff. Make sure you grab those links. And a huge thank you to our three panelists. Absolutely fascinating. Talking with the three of you tonight, amazing work that you're doing. So thank you so much for sharing that with us tonight and uh, helping our sophomores understand how they can get into these fields. I think also really cool that this is not a women in VC panel or women in private equity panel, but it happens to be all women. So kudos to VC for, uh, for that. So love that. Just wanted to say, because usually, usually when it's all women on a panel, it's like a women panel. But this yes. is just like a banking or pathways into VC or private equity panel and happens to be all women, which is very rare. Uh, so uh, I love that. And uh, great to meet you, fellow panelists. Absolutely. Thank you so much.